All right, YouTube, what is going on? It is Conflict Nerd Callum here today, bringing you another episode of my Transport Fever Let's Play series, Let's Get Scotland Moving. In today's episode, we have a lot of issues, which, as you know, and if you've seen the last episode, then we've got a lot of issues to do with, mainly cargo and food that we need to go ahead and deal with this episode. Now, I originally said that I wanted to go ahead and aim for a passenger episode, then go ahead and do a goods episode, so on and so forth, but the changes that I really made in the last episode, I didn't actually get it finished. So this process is carrying on into this episode, and to be fair, like the goods, like, the only reason I am actually going back to passengers is because I have to, like right now I'm so excited about goods. Never really had to deal with goods in this way before, and that's why I'm so just intrigued and excited about them. So we're down here in Stranraer, we've got a few modifications that we need to make, so I'll talk you through what my plan is for this episode, hopefully we'll go ahead and reach it all. Two things also have to mention outside of that though, so as we can see here we've got Presswick Forest, whatever it is, Woods, Mill, you know, Forest, where the trees or where the wood comes from, if that makes any sense, and we can see that there is, at both the Dumfries and Presswick ones respectively, we can see that there is a large amount of logs waiting to come down here to Snorar, so we need to go ahead and add more trucks onto that route there. Then we come up here to the central belt and the food process. We went ahead and made quite a lot of modifications on this in the last episode and that is something which I want to go ahead and continue. Essentially I think we just need to add in more trucks here as well. Coming down to all of our I guess tools and our machines and our goods down here at the south of Glasgow we can see that things are progressing quite well. We can also see that we've got a coal mine here which I want to try and link up. Might not be this episode to be fair but we'll go ahead and see. I want to go ahead and bring more steel down here. So during the last episode we went ahead and we added in I think two I think two long trains of from the iron mine here and as we can see the Berwick iron mine is producing a lot of iron which is getting taken over to Fife. Do apologize about the frame rate issues guys I will come on to this point in a moment but as you can see if we come up to here now we can see that there's a lot of steel building up and this is something which I really just need to get on the move much 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 quicker. Coal and the iron are coming in at such a fast rate and steel's not going out at a fast enough rate that we're really just having a problem here. We're up at like over 400 overall which is an extremely large amount so we need to go ahead and deal with that issue as well. Then if we jump up north we can see that we are doing the the north food line needs to get sorted again. I do have a solution which I'm going to go ahead and implement and we, need to, we do need to get it sorted once and for all, and finally if we have time I want to go ahead and start shipping stuff by, or goods by ship, down to the central belt. So here's an iron ore mine which has got a great connection to the sea, and then that would link all the way down to here, right beside the sea as well, so it'd be really easy access and easy to implement, and that would connect into here at the Dundee steel mill, and that would be great. Again, I don't know where we'll get to in this episode though, but let's go ahead and get started. So the major change that I've made in between this and the last episode is that I've doubled up this line which goes from here at Dundee down to Glasgow. The line which the, I guess, the steel train goes on right now, but it might be more than that very, very shortly. But as you can see, it's now doubled up, and that means that we can get more than one train operating on it. Right now, there's only one train operating on it, and that's why we're getting such a large buildup of steel, I guess, over in the distance there. So the two things I actually want to talk about before we go ahead and start implementing all this stuff is that the game update is due sometime this week, so do not worry, the game issues are bad and I know they're bad right now, however hopefully the, or at least some of them, will be resolved by the next episode, or I might record two episodes right now, I'm actually really into this game right now, it's, it's difficult to go ahead and only record like an episode or two and then just go off, like you just want to keep on playing, but I do need to go ahead and restrict myself, so the update is coming shortly, let's put it that way, and hopefully it'll be in within the next three or four episodes. Then on top of that, I actually want to go ahead and address the issue of how our profit margins have been, and I want to go ahead and clear up some, I guess, comments which people were saying which I didn't do too good on the passenger front. So we'll go ahead and address the passenger front issue first. So a lot of people were saying that I shouldn't have gone ahead and broken up my trains into individual lines from one larger line, and... I think that I should have, and this is the reason why. I probably should have explained it better in the video, but the justification for it was is that the train between Presswick and Peterhead 
which Presswick 1, Glasgow 2, Stirling 3, Perth 4, Dundee 5, Aberdeen 6 and then Peterhead 7. There was five trains at a bit of capacity of 600, so give or take there was a bit of capacity on that line of about 3,000. Problem was, so many people wanted to travel between Dundee and Peterheads, or Dundee and Perth, sorry, but no one wanted to travel between Aberdeen and Peterhead, so it meant that there was a bit of a mismatch in certain parts of the line, and that's why I wasn't really making too much money on the line. If we looked at the individual line, we're probably only making about... 5 million or something, but as you can see now, I've gone ahead and accommodated for each section of the line. The stretch between Perth and Aberdeen, that's extremely busy, so I've got quite a few trains on it. Probably need to go ahead and put on an extra one actually, to be fair, but we can see that the profit margins are extremely good, so much better than before. And I understand the only downside to this is that it's not realistic, and I totally get that. But at the same time, this is a game and it's not exactly a real life simulator. So going ahead and actually looking at the profits from that change, you can see that all of our passenger services are doing in general really, really well. The Aberdeen Inverness is doing great and the Aberdeen Perth is doing absolutely amazing. The Aberdeen Peterhead, there's just not as much demand on that line as we can see actually both trains are full, so that's maybe a bit of a lie, but we need to go ahead and work on buses to fit in with the trains. That's something which I really haven't done and I need to go ahead and do it at some point. Then on top of that, our Edinburgh Glasgow this one's actually doing really bad, and I'm not really at all sure why. It just looks like the demand and the passenger numbers are not there on that line, which is kind of strange because in real life, it's Scotland's two largest cities and definitely Scotland's busiest rail routes. But for some reason in this, it's just not happening. I think one of the big reasons is, is because there's buses which interflict with the trains as well and also the train goes up via Stirling so that might have an effect so I will go ahead and address that issue at some point in the future. Edinburgh Newcastle's doing extremely well, Edinburgh Perth's doing extremely well. Then we get to the I guess the next point which I want to talk about though no how good is the Inverness Perth train doing? 20 odd million can you believe that? It's absolutely amazing and then Perth Press that's doing pretty well as well. Right, so good. This is the thing I was wanting to come on to. This is my next part. So right now we can see, and I've not actually analysed how profitable my goods routes have been so far at all, I think, in the past three episodes. I went ahead and built the lines and I was really just trying to meet the needs of the demand. I wasn't really going ahead and actually looking at the profit margins. And overall, we've got a bit of a mixture, which we can go ahead and work on. So the first thing is here, as you can see, we've got a Glasgow steel line, which that is doing extremely well. Again, that is taking the steel from the top right hand side of the screen down to the bottom left hand side of the screen at Glasgow. But that needs an extra train and we know that and we're about to implement that. Then on top of that, we have our Fife Iron Goods line. Now this is actually doing extremely well, though iron has dropped recently. But the reason for this is because there's not a highest demand at Dundee as there once was because Dundee is essentially full just because all the steel waiting at the platform and I believe the train station or the mill whatever one of them has probably reached capacity and that means that the request for iron isn't as high so that line was at like 5 million profit maybe 10 minutes ago but unfortunately now it's just dropped down the Glasgow Shinoir Planks line that's doing amazing 5 million and it's going to be even higher shortly as well when we go ahead and add in more trucks the North Food line Patchy and we're going to go ahead and solve that issue this episode. I've got a solution for that. And then finally coming down to the Isla Sterling train that has always been doing well and still is, which is great to see. So whereabouts am I going to start today? I think we're going to have to go ahead and start off with dealing with all the steel because it's just going to go ahead and bottleneck up and that's something which I don't want to see at all. So the first thing is, let me go ahead and actually check this individual train here. So I know what it is, that, and it can carry 130 all in all. Now, I've just had a thought. I have recently gone ahead and added more stuff into this game, or took some more stuff off the workshop, Sony, but I've not actually gone ahead and moved it into this save. So that's something which I need to do. There was a few more wagons, but to be honest, there was nothing exceptionally better than what's in the game right now. It's maybe a, a larger capacity by four, which yes, is gonna make a difference across 12, 14, how many wagons we have, but it's not gonna be a catastrophic game changer at this stage, if you understand what I'm saying. Right, so let's go ahead and grab ourselves our favorite locomotive, the BR47 Rail Freight, which we'll go ahead and buy. Then we need to go ahead and grab ourselves some wagons. 
And then I believe it's the open wagon we need. And no, it's not. Ooh, what wagon is it? It's one of these ones, a state car. Basically the same thing. Then we need to go ahead and change this up to steel. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and buy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This train needs to go onto the Fife Glasgow steel line, if I'm correct. So we'll go ahead and stick that there. And as you can see in the top right hand corner, that has got this line selected. So I've already went ahead and pre doubled up this line. The reason for that was because it's not an easy line to go ahead and navigate. It goes under a lot of buildings. I mean, it goes right under Edinburgh, I believe it is, which is not an easy feat to go ahead and navigate. Then the bridge here looks kind of strange. I mean, this area has been awfully terraformed, but it was just being really difficult with me. So there's a small island here in the middle between the tracks where they split up. And this is where trains are going to lose a lot of speed coming along here. But at least we've got the increased capacity now, which means we can go ahead and start to move a little bit more of this steel. So that issue has been dealt with and that will hopefully go ahead and raise up some more iron demand because I can imagine that's dropped just because that place over there is full. We can see that there is still a fair amount being produced actually, it's just I don't think... Well, how full are you? I mean, you're doing not bad. You're still at 90, so that's still over half. And the production here is quite high, so I think when we go ahead and remove the steel, things will get much better anyway. There's also some coal building up here which is nice to see also. Right, let's travel north and let's go ahead and see what we can do up here. So. It's, it's the food line. that's really the bottom line, and I need to go ahead and make quite a large change here. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and standardise the type of trains that we have on this track. So if we go ahead and we scroll down here, we can see that the Isla Sterling train, that connects up to two farms, and it's always been doing extremely well. If anything, it's at its lowest point uh, for quite a while actually. There we go, 6 million is a figure which I like to see a lot better than 4 million. But in general, it's always been consistent. Whereas this, we know the North Food Line, it's not been consistent. It's been here, there and everywhere. And I think we need to go ahead and make that consistency happen. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and change all the trains on the North Food Line to be near enough exactly like the Stirling Railway Line, which connects up with Isla. Because the, of the consistency levels, we might as well go ahead and try and emulate that. Now, I've got a real mixture, as we can see here. I've got a mixture of, first of all, wagons or locomotives, sorry, at the front. Then I've got a mixture of wagons at the back, some doing livestock and some going ahead and doing grain. And as we can see up here, the majority of it is grain, and that's what we need to really go ahead and get on the move. And that's something which I think we just need to go ahead and, as I said, standardise. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do something very controversial here. I'm going to go ahead and get all trains to return to depots and then they're going to go ahead and get sold. Now one train hasn't done that but I'm sure it'll do it shortly. Then what I'm going to go ahead and do is deploy four trains exactly the same to go ahead and try and give us that consistency. Now that's going to have a knock on effect for tons and tons of different routes down at Elgin. The Elgin food route into Elgin, the one into Peterhead. I don't think we've made an Aberdeen one yet but it's going to have a knock on effect on the whole system but it will be worth it long term, do not worry. We'll come back to this later on. As we can see, we've got a warning, and we know what that warning is. Or it's not, actually. It's Glasgow. Huh. Right, okay. I, I swear down that was going to be our food processing line up here, but maybe not. Strange, that one. Also, you guys are at deadlock as well, which isn't good. So we need to go ahead and solve this issue, which I should be able to do, actually, without turning that train around. So if we go ahead and do a junction off, to the, ah, oh, don't do this to me game. Right, so find a solution. Basically, this train is incredibly short and I'm not really at all sure why, but we're gonna go ahead and solve this whole issue up here. As you can see, the game issues are, they're very, very bad today. I'm so glad the update is coming very, very shortly or we'd be starting a new map. Now, a lot of people have been hinting, should I go ahead and bring back the Grand Canyon? And I will be bringing back the Grand Canyon. Not really at all sure how it's going to work with this series, though. If I'll do day around and daily transport fever videos, or if I go ahead and do a different format. Still to work that out, and I really just need to see what the game update brings, really. That's really what I'm looking forward to. It could also cause us a lot of problems, and that is something which I could see happening. And the reason for that is because it might not be compatible with all the mods I have, or previous saves. 
So while we're waiting on the Northern Food Line to go ahead and sort itself out, I want to turn my attention now to some trucking issues. So these issues are basically when we've gone ahead and processed the item, for example here we're creating grain or livestock into foods, or I guess as well down at the forest, we need to go ahead and basically have a larger capacity to move stuff, and as we can see here there's a lot of food building up. So what I want to do is go ahead and grab myself some more trucks, not too mo many more trucks, just a few trucks, and go ahead and assign these onto the two food lines. Now one thing I probably need to do is go ahead and make these trucks food specific only or we're going to have a problem. And you can see there's a lot of red here, this is an issue which I'm going to be resolving relatively shortly. Let me go ahead and very quickly actually just sell these and let me go ahead and do that again. So let me buy and change to foods. Let's do one, two, three and stick basically three onto each of these lines. So I'm going to stick three onto the ZF Sterling line and then I'm going to go ahead and buy another one, two, three in foods and I'm going to go ahead and set this onto the Glasgow Sterling line which is that line there I believe or no it's this line here the ZF food. The problem is I've been a little bit inconsistent with my names so I'm starting to get a little bit better at it again now but it's the Glasgow Sterling and ZF Glasgow Sterling it's sure the exact same colour so that was an easy mistake that I could have made there. As we can see though we can see that there is so much profit coming out of the trucks as well, absolutely amazing amounts which I am extremely happy about and never really expected. We're at near enough a million on the ZF Glasgow Sterling line and the Sterling line is not doing as well to be fair, I'm not really at all sure why but I guess we can go ahead and look at the city's needs and see whereabouts we're at with that. So let me jump into wherever the city is, here it is Sterling, we can see that we're at 59% which overall is absolutely amazing. We jump down to Glasgow, I can imagine similar figures, 55%, then we've also got our tools and our goods there as well, which is nice to see. One thing I do want to do is go ahead and modify the sterling food route though, because I think I know why and I have identified it in the last episode. It's the reason is North Road, which I think is causing me a problem. So if we go ahead and reroute that, and that goes down into the upper sterling where the food gets dropped off, that is a much more central, I think, and it also means... Or no, it's not. Maybe it isn't central. I mean, it is relatively central and I think it's in part with the business areas, as we can see. It is in the business part of town-ish. But I would say that it is not exactly... The trucks aren't having to go along a really, really busy road, whereas they were previously and that might have been causing a little bit of loss of money, which is something which we're now hopefully avoiding. As we can see, it's just basically gridlock in the town, which is something I will sort out eventually. Right, so the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is I want to jump down and see the build up down here because there is some more build up here as well. This is basically just to do with going into Glasgow, to do with tools, to do with goods and to do with machines as well. This is basically just the outputs from the two factories here. We need more trucks, that's the bottom line. And I think I actually only have about four all in all trucks on this line. So this is the Z Glasgow Goods and Tools. So we actually have eight trucks, but eight trucks evidently isn't enough. We're going ahead and producing at a little bit of a faster rate than I once thought. So we'll go ahead and add on three trucks, which I know adds up to 11, which is a strange number, but we'll go ahead and do that. I don't want to go ahead and overcrowd things, and at the same time, 12 might be a little bit too many. I realize that a small truck isn't going to probably make that much of a difference, but at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and do it like this for now. So let's assign you three trucks on there like that and that should hopefully go ahead and clear some of the backlog. The backlog really isn't bad here, I mean I guess it is for the tools but outside of that the machines and the goods they are I guess a bit mediocre but I think they are a little bit more complex to create if I can remember. Tools are very easy because it only requires one steel or two wood which we're bringing in plenty whereas machines require a mixture or they require plastic which is something we do not have here at all. Right, so with that dealt with, let's jump down and continue with our trucks, but let's move over to the woods. So as we can see, there is small build-ups at both forests, but really not that large build-ups at all, actually. But I am going to go ahead and add on just a few more basic trucks. So first of all, let me open this, and let's actually see how the two wood routes are doing. So the wood routes, the ZWs, are doing absolutely great. The Dumfries Presswick is at 1.2, 1.3 million, and the Schnrar Presswick... That is just about at the same actually, it's doing absolutely amazing. So I realise I've made a typo there, haven't I? Something doesn't quite add up. This should be the Dumfries Strenraar, not Dumfries Presswick. 
I sort of thought in my mind there, I've said Presswick twice, but I'm only referring to Presswick once here, so something's definitely wrong, and I'll go ahead and rename this. So that solves that small issue there. I just want to go ahead and add on a few more trucks, basically. So we jump in here to freight, and we go ahead and grab these. This is what I want, so logs. You're automatically set to logs, which is good. So I'm going to go ahead and buy one, two. I'm only going to set, I think, two extra on, because there is a little bit of build-up, yes, but it's not actually that extreme. So we'll go ahead and set two onto the Presswick Strenroir line, and then we'll go ahead and set two onto the Dumfries Strenroir line, and that should solve that problem there, if it is even a problem. Right, so with that dealt with, let's travel back up to the central belt. So as we can see, the steel it isn't really moving out at much faster rate. I don't know if production's increased or whatnot. As we can see here, we're at... 316, so that is a mental note, Callum. Go ahead and just track that. Do we maybe need a third train on here? Because honestly, the number really hasn't gone down. It was at 400 last time I checked here, and things just really haven't moved any quicker at all. I do want to check and see whereabouts the other train actually is. And is that at this end here? That's a planks train. Whereabouts is the other train? It must be underground somewhere. Or it's maybe not on the tracks. Let's go ahead and actually jump in and see whereabouts we're at with this. We're going to go ahead and deal with the North Food Line in a second. I think it's just about reset as well, which is good. So it looks like that one of you is just leaving over the bridge and one of you is are actually about to pass each other. If we can go ahead and get the camera, we can see that one train has just come out the tunnel and is on the right hand side and the other one is coming down on the left hand side. So they're just passing each other, but they are going ahead and doing an okay job, but is it good enough? That's the thing. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and add on an extra train here just to go ahead and increase capacity because, as I said, I want to go ahead and add in this coal mine onto the network and also want to go ahead and add in that iron mine as well up at Thurzo as well shortly. So there's going to definitely be more output coming from this. So let me go ahead and jump in and let me just go ahead and very quickly produce another train. So that train there has cost me quite a bit of money, but it'll definitely get its money's worth back, and that's been deployed now onto the Fife at Glasgow goods line. So with all that done, that's pretty much the central belt done for now. I can just wait to see the changes happening, and then once the changes have happened, then we can go ahead and again just take more corrective action. Something I want to do is probably try and... I don't think right now we need any more coal trucks on there, but if we see the demand increase, then we can go ahead and do that relatively easily. How are you at? You're actually down a little bit, which is not good. So that's something which I probably need to go ahead and... I think it's just to do with the iron drying up right now. The good thing is the steel is now moving out, but the production here... Again, the production is pretty stable here, actually. I'm just not really at all sure. Maybe we overbuilt on the trains. Maybe the trains we upgraded to, because we just used to have last episode only one train on here which only had a capacity of about 100 and i have two trains at about 170 capacity so that could be making the real 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 large difference which is not a great thing because i don't really want to scale back at the same time it's not doing too bad but i think it is having a knock-on effect here for our dundee steel mill there's also interestingly a sawmill here which is something I never realised. So if there's any forests, there's a forest up here as well at Thurzo. Right, okay, there's some possibilities here actually for a little bit of movement down here because again, we could do that via boat. We can get you to come into, God, Aberdeen's grown quite a bit, hasn't it? We can get you into a port like here, for example, and then it's just a short journey over there. So that's a possibility, but at the same time, do we need more wood right now? I don't really think so, if I'm totally honest with you. Right, so coming back over to here, we can see that there is lots and lots of items to get moved, and we need to go ahead and basically just put new trains onto the tracks here. So I'm going to go ahead and, as I said, literally copy the exact trains of the Isla route, because the Isla route has just been so successful. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is jump into locomotives here and again we're going to, I'm just going with it because I know it's a success and I don't really want to go ahead and once we start to make exceptionally good profit like 10 million we can maybe go ahead and play with things but until then I'm not really interested. So if we go ahead and buy one of you guys then I want to go ahead and buy myself some wagons. So we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some of these and you guys are going to carry green. And that is going to be one, two, three, four, five. 
and that works out fine. Then what I want to go ahead and do is I need to carry food back up here as well actually. So what I think I'll do is I'll go ahead and actually have that set to automatic. And the reason for that, again, is so that food can be carried. So going down it carries grain and coming back up it carries food. But we'll go ahead and do one, two, three, four, five of you guys. Then what we'll go ahead and do is grab ourselves these wagons here. And we'll go ahead and set this to livestock. And we'll go ahead and... What's the capacity difference? You guys can carry 24, whereas you guys can only carry 13. So a bit of a contrast, to be honest. So what I'll do is go ahead and we'll put livestock on here. The thing is though, livestock isn't being produced as much up here at the two farms at Thurzo. But I'll go ahead and buy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that means there that there is still a lot more wheat and food going to be carried than livestock, even though there is more livestock carriages. So with that, what I want to do is go ahead and clone vehicle once and clone vehicle twice and then clone vehicle a third time, costing 18 million for each vehicle, which is quite a lot. But with that modification, we should be able to go ahead and assign these trains onto the north food line, and we should hopefully see some success from that. So they're going to roll out, and what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually just let the game run for about 10 minutes, and we'll come back and see how we're getting on. So while we wait and see on the effects of that happening actually, I've gone ahead and let the game run for a few minutes there, but not really a substantial amount of time. What I want to do is go ahead and create a port up here so we can go ahead and start to move some of this iron here from the third old iron mine. And I want to see, I've never gone ahead and used ships to carry cargo before and I think it's something which we could make quite a bit of money out of. So the first thing is here, I can see two issues. I don't want to go ahead and have a separate truck which has to carry food from the mine or ore sorry from the mine to the port that is something which i really want to go ahead and avoid so i need to make sure we get our sphere of influences correct and then once that is done we should be able to go ahead and i mean the rest of this should be relatively easy we just need to go ahead and grab ourselves big cargo ships which at the same time i'm not really at all sure if we have to be honest again it's something that i've not really played around with so i don't know how we will do so that's me gone ahead and been able to fit in a second because Thurzo actually already has a passenger port up the top there which we could go ahead and move right to here by the way that's an option but aside from that right now we can see that this is in sphere of influence which is a big thing. I was a little bit worried about it and it was quite difficult to build I'm totally honest. It was just not being able to align with the terrain and if you actually look here it is actually quite steep coastline so as you can see I've sort of carved out a little bit of a bowl here and then the road cuts through the mountain as it goes up to the iron ore mine. Right, so that is this end dealt with, which is good. So we jump down. It's going to be quite a long route, actually. It's going to take quite a while, but this is the end which more worries me. I don't know if we're going to be in speed of influence at all for this. So if we go ahead, and the dock's probably going to be round about here, I'm thinking. But at the same time, again, I'm getting the same issues that I was having before. So after a long time of playing of it, and as you can see here, a failed attempt over here, and then another failed attempt over here, we've managed to get this in. I've had to go ahead and remove, or move, the truck depot just a little bit, not too much to be fair actually, to allow me to go ahead and get this road in which comes down to the dock. Now we're very, very fortunate, and there's a saying in Scotland, you missed it by a ball hair, or something like that. Ball hair is like a measurement in Scotland, so obviously no ball hair, ball hairs, you know, your pubes, I guess you could say, extremely thin. People use that as a measurement, like, oh, I missed you by a ball hair or something like that, you know, so, and, and this is the exact case here. Boats can get into this dock by a ball hair, and you'll see, this is a navigatable waters map, and there's only one tiny bit where boats can get under, and this is it here. This is the just got through by a ball hair sort of measurement here, so that will connect in here nicely to our port, and that is in sphere of influence. Fortunately, just to know more of the Dundee steel mill. So that means that this route can now be created with no problems at all. Now, I'm not really at all sure how profitable this is going to be. We'll give it a go, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Simple as we'll go ahead and make altercations. But from this, I can't see why it isn't going to make money. It just depends on the boats, really, and that's something which I'm a little bit nervous about. So first of all, we jump into freight. We can see that we have a lot of boats here. Now again, I've not really gone ahead and played with boats, so I'm not really at all sure how this is going to work and what are better boats than others. I'm assuming that the most recent boat is going to be the best boat because one, it can go the fastest, two, it has the largest capacity, which 
that really seems to be the case. So we're looking here at the Merlin which has a capacity of 250. It can carry everything which we need which is just iron ore in this case to be fair. So let me go ahead and jump into here and let me select iron ore and then we're going to go ahead and buy one two of you guys for the time being. Now that we've bought the boats we need to go ahead and set up the line because that is something which might be a little bit useful so we'll go ahead and use it keeps wanting me to use this brown colour and the reason I don't want to use it is because it's really difficult to see but on blue water it might actually not be too bad so this colour might finally be removed. The only reason it keeps on going back to this colour is because I believe it's the only colour I've not used but there's evidently a reason because it's just so difficult to see. Right so that is that connection made and it's going to be a long one but I'm going to go ahead and very quickly name this. So that is the boat from Thurzal to Fife line set up and as we can see it is a... It's just a long one, that's really the bottom line. It sort of comes right past here, right past Thurzo, then it continues on right down here, past Dundee, then it comes round under the bridge and in here to... This is actually classified as part of Dunbar, could you believe it? So I've called it Fife because it is in the Fife's dog head, I guess you will, but we can just see that Perth is slowly getting... I mean, they're basically all joined on now, as we can see. It's just... And I knew this was going to happen, and I expect more growth to come around about this factory as well as we continue on forward. But it's, I'm just a bit surprised this is part of Dunbar, not Dundee or Perth or even Edinburgh for that matter I guess. Right so with that done let's go ahead and close out of this, let's go ahead and jump in here, let's go ahead and set and let's go ahead and set this onto the boat Thursday to Fife line and off you guys roll. So we'll come back and in the next episode we'll see how you guys get on. As we can see here, there's a boat going through our boat, but the boat is relatively large actually. Can we see? Yes, this is the boat coming out and it kind of looks kind of strange actually. It's a nice skybox in the distance actually. I've not really seen the skybox from a boat's first point of view before, but this looks quite nice. It's got a cover on it as well, which is something which is an added bonus. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing though, because I do like seeing into the hull of ships and seeing what cargo they have. But you do rarely find large open boats like that. Right, so these guys are moving out and as we can see they are... Yeah, I don't know actually. I don't know if I'm happy with them or not. I thought the ends would be a little bit higher. They're actually quite quite flat boats of anything, just extremely long. But nonetheless, they'll do the job. Now we just need to hope that demand starts to kick in up here at Thurzo. Now it will take a while. It usually takes the boats or any kind of transport for that matter, one full width to go ahead and actually get things on the go. So it might take a little bit of while for things to get on the move, but when they do, I'm sure they will be successful. Right, so the final thing I want to check this episode is actually how we've got on with this modification to the North Food Line. So first of all, we can see we're making a loss, which isn't good. And before we're making a profit, which is true, but I think we're actually producing more food overall and that's not a lie. So as we can see here, we've got trucks which come in and serve Thurzo and they're doing not too bad. I think they are, you've got 24 on you, you're going to have 24 on you, so on and so forth. I don't really know why livestock's there if I'm totally honest. That's a strange one. It must have been when the trains disappeared. They must have, yeah, the farms must have put something into there, which, yeah, that's going to be there forever, isn't it? Because I can't go ahead and manually remove that, which is unfortunate. Oh well, you two cows can enjoy yourself there. Outside of that though, if we jump down to Elgin and oh my word, this is, uh, I need the game update so badly. We can see that the production rate is relatively good I would say, it's at what 450 so it's maybe going down a little bit but overall I would say it's quite good and I'm relatively happy with it and this is a good starting point. Hopefully things will just go ahead and get better and better as time goes on. There's a lot of food here but not a lot of food here and again here at the depot I think in general the lines will be making a bit of loss especially the food ones that provide food to Elgin and to Peterhead just because there is not a lot being produced I think this is about to crash actually so I think I probably need to spread my trains out more that's probably one of my larger problems as well which I'll do in between episodes and that'll hopefully go ahead and make things that little bit more profitable. Coming down to here we can see that there has been a clear out of steel which is good so there is not any more steel building up which I think is a good thing. We've got some more iron coming in here, unfortunately it's not returned to its previous rate so you're only at a production of 358 which isn't bad to be fair but at the same time I would like it to be higher. Then if we come over to here we can see that we are, we're handling everything well actually, food we're handling well 
as we can see in the top right hand corner and then same with goods, tools and machines over here as well. Final check is the planks and the planks again I think we've pretty much solved that problem as well so I am good with that. Right, so what I'm going to do here, ladies and gentlemen, is I am going to wrap today's episode up. First of all, I would like to apologise. I have a little bit of a sore throat and it seems to be making strange noises right now. Literally, as I said that, it made a strange noise. So I do apologise about that. On top of that, I am just a, a, a little bit all over the place and a little bit frustrated, if you cannot tell, with the just the game issues, I think, really. But hopefully, again, as I said, the update should hopefully be around shortly. Might already be out by the time this video is out, but we'll just have to wait and see. Right, the next episode needs to go ahead and deal with people, and especially in the central belt, because as we can see, bus line after bus line after bus line is just in the negative. And overall, we are making a profit, quite a good profit at that, I think. But if we can go ahead and turn a lot of these passenger lines into much more profitable lines, then that would be so much better. To see how we're actually doing overall, we can see that in general, it looks like 2064 we spent a lot of money and that was probably buying the four trains we bought in the north but in general just under 100 million a year is what we are roughly making. Anyway with that said ladies and gentlemen I'm wrapping this episode up here so thank you very much for watching my name is Conflict Callum and I'm out.